Hello, I'm the Dynamic Dipper from Morecambe Bay and we are in Morecambe Bay. We're um, on the stone jetty, well near the stone jetty at Morecambe. So this video is going to speak to you about how to swim safely in the sea, risk assess tides and currents. So just before we start, I just wanted to speak about the official RNLI campaign Float to Live. So if you find yourself immersed in cold water, so whether you have purposely gone into cold water or you've fallen into cold water, the official RNLI advice is float to live. So you would um, put your arms out and your legs out, your head back and you would float until you can get your breathing under control. So basically the advice is, is that you don't thrash around and try and um, tread water or, or, or anything like that while you're still gasping. Um, that you to lie on your back and um, just relax arms out legs out until you can get your, your your breath back under control and you can try and swim or um, raise the alarm that's the official arm and ally advice and i'll put a link in the description for you to have a look at that so we're talking about today swimming safely in the sea tides and currents so tides are in 12 hour cycles six hours for the high tide to come in six hours for the for the for it to go out to low tide and if we're on um, tides obviously are governed by uh, a full moon and a new moon they happen twice in the month so once a full moon and once a new moon in the month during those times we will have spring tides spring tides are more water higher tide and it comes in stronger to the beach or the bay and it's quicker coming in and it's quicker going out that's how spring tides work when we're not on those cycles in terms of a full moon and a new moon we are uh, on neaps on neap tides and neap tides are lower smaller tides the volume of water is less and the um, it's slower coming in and going out so you're able to have a look on your calendar and it'll say a full moon and uh, a new moon and you will be able to guesstimate around those dates when you're going to have some spring tides um, people like spring tides it allows you to swim for longer and um, here in Morecambe Bay we usually get in an hour before high tide but when it's a very high tide you can get in even before that so the difference between high and low tides is very dramatic in some places okay but what you need to remember on spring tides although they're really very good for swimming and you can swim in them longer that actually the water is coming in quicker but when it goes out it's going out quicker and so it has more pull and more strength to it and that's probably what you need to keep in mind in terms of safety okay so where can you get tide information from you can get it from your phone on an app um, tide times near me or similar you can get it on a Google search on the internet you can also get it from a tide time book so a lot of fish and tackle shops sell tide time books and you can also get it from harbour master offices and things like that sometimes they're posted on the window those are there those are the places that you can get tide times from for your area um, if we think about how the um, tide comes in, some people feel, some people believe, um, and I certainly did before I learnt about tides, that it comes in at the same rate and it goes out at the same rate. And actually that isn't true. So um, the rule of twelfths is something that you need to keep in mind when thinking about tide times. And I'll put a diagram up, two diagrams up, to um, demonstrate, to illustrate um, the rule of twelfths. But basically, on the th so so six hours coming in and six hours going out. Basically, on the third and fourth hour of the six hours of it coming in it is at its strongest and fastest. So at the third and fourth hour, it is probably bringing in 50% of the water that it will bring in for high tide, okay? So one twelfth in the first hour, two twelfths in the second, three twelfths, three twelfths, then two twelfths, then one, okay? And that's over six hours. So those diagrams will, will demonstrate that. And so you will understand that actually on the third and the fourth hour, 
that is probably when it's coming in at its fastest speed and also you know in the next six hours when it's going out that's when it's going out at its fastest and its strongest so when you're going swimming in the sea of course you need your toe float and a brightly coloured cap so that you're visible but also you need to think to yourself how fast can I swim how fast is the tide coming in and if I am taken by the tide where will I end up I mean that's the worst case scenario obviously but you need to think about where you're getting in at and actually if the tide does take you where is it that you would end up so how can you tell what direction the tide is coming in you can have a look on um, cardinal markers I don't know whether there's one right there's 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 like um, some green perches poles on um, some shorelines okay you can see the direction of the water that's passing passing past that and that will tell you how quickly it's coming in not in numbers obviously but you will be able to suss out it's coming in quite quick and um, you will be able to see the direction of the current past cardinal boys past pier ends past groins that type of thing and so um, and so that's just an indicator when is it more um, when is it more rough going in the sea sometimes when you have um, wind over tide so when you have wind against tide so the tide is coming in but the wind is blowing the opposite direction of course you would get um, you would get churned up sea uh, rougher sea choppier um, with uh, white spray on the top so that's a consideration uh, obviously when, when when it's wind coming in with the tide uh, it'll be flat and quite smooth and um, those are the ideal conditions to swim okay so I'm just trying to think what else in terms of how to how to think about which direction the wind is coming from um, girls can face the wind and the hair will blow back that will tell you whereabouts it's coming from and you'll have a compass on your phone maybe or if you've not got one you can download one or you can have a look for um, smoke that's going in some direction if you may see some on the prom um, or, or clouds which direction the clouds may be blowing in or, or flags you know flags on the prom uh, you'll be able to see uh, which direction they're blowing in and then you'll be able to tell the uh, the wind direction so I hope I've mentioned most of the things that you might need to do to do a risk assessment of course you need to think about your the beach where you go in whether it slopes okay whether it's just a gradual slope or whether it's quite flat for quite a long time far out because you would have to wade quite a far bit out to get some depth or whether there's a shelf going on on your beach you know does it go along like this and then go down into some channels so we haven't covered everything in terms of going safely in the sea but I'm over five minutes so I think that might be enough for now and the next time we'll do about rip tides and other considerations for swimming in the sea okay bye